What we're going to be going over here is sales variance analysis and we're going to look at how we calculate these different variances based on our sales here. So when you're talking about variances, you're dealing with these different budgets. You're going to, and we'll be looking at it in table form here. So on our table, we're going to have to deal with these different budgets here. We're going to be having our static budget, our flexible budget, and our actual results. And we're going to be looking at our variances between those amounts. But uh, further going on here with our table, let's understand what we're going to be looking at for each of those budgets. So for our sales variances, we're going to be looking at our having to determine our revenues here. And then knowing our revenues here, then we're going to have to determine our total variable costs, which will be a direct material, direct labor, and some variable overhead. And on a per unit basis, we're going to be looking at that. So after we know our total variable costs, then we can determine the next thing would be our contribution margin. And contribution margin is simply the difference between our revenues here and our total variable costs. And then once knowing our contribution margin, then we can determine our operating income. And that's really the uh, difference here between our fixed overhead that we'd have and then the difference between our fixed overhead and our contribution margin would be our operating income. So under each of these uh, items here, we're going to have to determine our different vari uh, sales variances here. Okay, so starting out with our budgets here. So first with our static budget, that's really our budgeted units or uh, that we have for the period of time, some budgeted cost or some budgeted price. So everything is budgeted here. That's our static budget. That's really our master budget. And that's something we do at the beginning of the period. We establish that our static budget here. Again, budgeted units times a budgeted price or a budgeted cost. So everything is budgeted here for our static. Now, at the end of the period, this is where we can determine our actual results. Those are really our actual units or prices, our actual number of units or quantities here times the actual cost or some actual price. So those would be our actual results. At the end of the period, we determine those. And then this is where we have our flexible budget. We'll be looking at the flexible budget here. So remember, at the we do we determine our flexible budget at the end of the period here because it's based on our actual units or quantities that we have for the period times the budgeted cost. So the budget budgeted cost here is coming off our static budget that we developed at the beginning of the period here, and our actual units or actual quantities are coming off the actual the actual results that we have for the period. So that would be our flexible budget. So here's the case when you're doing a sales variance analysis here, you're gonna to have to determine uh, the difference between your actual and flexible budgeted amounts here. Those would be your price or cost variances. And then the difference between the flexible and the static amounts, those would be the volume variances. Because if you look at it in these terms here, so flexible amount here, we our actual units, let's say we had 10,000 for the period here and our static amount we budgeted 12,000. So really the only difference between the flexible and our static budget here is the volume or the number of units because the flexible budget is set up on the budgeted values or budgeted amounts for the period here, but the units are based on our actual amount. So that is the difference. And then the difference between our actual and flexible budget uh, would be the price or cost because the unit numbers are the same. Just say for actual units, say for the period we sold 10,000 here, so flexible budget is 10,000. So this is where you're gonna get your price or cost variances. Okay, so we have to also look at the total variance between our static and our actual amounts at, at the end of the period. And that's where we're gonna get down to our total sales volume variance. Okay, so stepping through our different variances here. So for units sold, I've, I will look at a key at the end here as a reference, but you can understand AU stands for actual units, BU is budgeted units. So for our revenues, it's just taking our, for our actual quantities, actual units times the actual price on a per unit basis, and flexible budgets, actual units times the budgeted price. And then of course our static budget is just the budgeted units times the budgeted price on a per unit basis. So our sales price variance is really the, the difference here between our actual price, our sales price variance is the difference between our actual, actual and flexible budget amount. That would be the difference between our actual price and our budgeted price. The actual units are the same here between that. So actual difference between actual price, budgeted price times actual units gives you your sales price variance here. And then the sales volume variance, that's just the difference between, in this case, uh, 
we take the budgeted price is the same here for both the flexible and static, but the actual units, difference between the actual units for the flexible here and the budget units for the static amount. So that is the sales volume variances. And that's the way this you calculate all these variances through these different um, items here that you have. So the next thing would be your direct material, direct labor and variable overhead. Same deal here. What you're going to come up with is your total variable cost. But on a per unit basis, just to look at our uh, static amount here, just say so you have some budgeted number of units here, quantities here, times each one of your inputs, so direct material, labor, and overhead. So direct material would be budgeted, direct material, budgeted direct labor for labor, for variable overhead, budgeted variable overhead. And then for a flexible budget, all you're doing is taking your actual number of units times each one of those budgeted inputs here. And then actual quantities here would just be, or actual results, actual units times the actual on a per unit basis for direct material labor and overhead. So that's pretty much how the table works here. So our total variable cost that we'd be looking at would just be the, uh, the our three item three here, direct materials, four here, direct labor, and variable overhead five here. So that's how you could determine your total variable cost. But on a per unit basis, just say you were given the case here, so your total variable cost, and let's just say we knew it on a per unit basis, which we could calculate. So looking at our static budget, you'd have a budgeted variable cost here on a per unit basis, times since budgeted units, and then for the flexible budget would just be actual units times the budget of variable cost. And for actual budget, actual units times the actual variable cost on a per unit basis. So again, looking at our unit cost variance, that's the difference between our actual and our flexible budget. So we just take um, the actual units here are the same between both of those budgets. But the difference, it would be the difference here, actual variable cost from our actual amount, uh, and between the actual variable cost and our budgeted variable cost. So that difference times the actual units gives your unit cost variance here. And this deals with your variable cost that you're dealing with. What we looked up above here, remember that dealt with our revenues portion here of the sales price and volume uh, variance here. So now we're getting down to our variable cost portion here. And that's we're looking at it in those terms here. This is the unit cost or variance here for those sales. So we have a sales volume variance here for our total variable cost, whereas up here we have the sales volume variance based on our revenue. So that's how we're dealing, dealing with that. Okay, so we determine our unit cost variance here, actual variable cost, difference between actual variable cost on a per unit basis and a budgeted variable cost times the actual unit. So our sales volume variance here was simply the difference between our flexible and static budget. Those were based on our budgeted variable costs the same on a per unit basis, but the difference was the actual units, difference between our actual units here, flexible budget, and the budgeted units here from the static budget. Okay, so that's our sale volume variance here, and that's based on our variable cost unit here. So for our contribution margin, that's simply, again, the difference here between our revenues up here and our total variable cost here, however you look at it. So if you look at it on a per unit basis here to contribution margin, you can have some budgeted units here times some budgeted contribution margin here uh, for a static amount on a per unit basis. And then over here for the actual amount would be actual units times some actual contribution margin. So our, for our price cost variance, that's simply looking at our actual contribution margin here. Uh, the difference between our actual contribution margin here and our budgeted contribution margin. That's the difference. The actual units are the same. We just factor those out here. So that's our price cost variance for, on a contribution margin basis. Then our sales volume variance is simply the difference between what? Our actual units here and our budgeted units times the budgeted contribution margin per unit because that's what stays the same. So you see what's going on here. Okay, so now we step down to our operating income here. And that's really the difference between our, our eight, our contribution margin we have here, and our fixed overhead amount that we have. So looking at it uh, in these terms here, so we let's look at it here with our static budget. Again, the, diff, the deal here is that You've figured out your contribution margin up above here. But when you're dealing with the flexible budget and the static budget, they have the same uh, uh, 
budgeted fixed overhead here on a per unit basis. So those are the same. So, and that, but between your actual budget here, our actual amount and your flexible budget, there is a difference. There can be a difference. But looking at our sales volume variance here, all we're looking at is taking our budgeted price, difference between our budgeted price and our budgeted variable cost on a per unit basis, times our actual units, a difference between our actual units here and our budgeted units here. So our looking up here just in our contribution margin, our actual units here for the flexible budget, budgeted units here for the static budget, so that difference. But then when we got over here to our budgeted price, where did we get that from? That came up above here in budget variable cost. So you're just looking at your uh, budgeted price here. Those would be that those revenues that we're looking at here up above in the budget. You're just looking at your revenues minus your budgeted variable cost here basis. So that's your overall sales volume variance here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at it. Now we'll just summarize that table we went through here for our sales variance analysis here. And these are the formulas that we went through here and that we developed. And now all these uh, formulas here, all the variables in these formulas here are, are on a per unit basis. So starting out with our total operating income variance, that is what we call our sales volume variance, again for our operating income. That would be the difference between our budgeted price and our budgeted variable cost here on a per unit basis times the difference here between our actual units sold and our budgeted units uh, that were meant to be sold here. Okay, so that's for our uh, total operating income variance. Now looking at our total contribution margin variance, that's broken down between our price and cost variance here for the contribution margin and our sales volume variance here, again, for the contribution margin. So looking at our price or cost, uh, variance here, that would be taking our actual contribution margin, uh, the difference between the actual contribution margin on a per unit basis and the budgeted contribution margin. And, and that difference times the actual number of units that were sold. And under, our con under the price and cost variance here for the contribution margin, we'd have that broken down between our sales price variance here, that would be the actual price difference between the actual price per unit and the budgeted price per unit times the actual number of units that were sold. And that would be under the revenues section. And then under our variable cost section, that would be our unit cost variance here. That would be the actual variable cost, difference between the actual variable cost here and their budget variable cost on a per unit basis times the actual number of units that were sold. Now, moving over to our contribution margin over here for our sales volume. Uh, that would be the difference between the actual units that were sold and the budgeted and the budgeted units that were to be sold. So that difference times the budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis. That would be our sales volume variance. And then on our sales volume variance, that can be broken down between the revenues part. That would under our revenues, that would be the actual units sold. Difference between actual units sold and the budgeted units sold times the budgeted price per unit here. And then for the cost part or the variable cost under the variable cost, that would be the actual difference between the actual units sold and the budgeted units sold times the budgeted variable cost per unit here. Okay, so we've looked at this uh, total contribution margin variance here. Either we can look at it through these two variances here between our price cost for the contribution margin here or the sales volume for our contribution margin. And then further, we could break it down between these other four variances that we looked at. We, under our price cost variance here, we have the sales price variance and the unit cost variance. And then under a sales volume variance, we have the revenue part and our cost part. Okay, so that's just going through this diagram where we reviewed those formulas that we looked at for the we did we had done here for those the sales value variance analysis now let's just go over here and look go through our key here as a reference so what i've been going through is these different uh, equations here so au stands for the actual units sold bu stands for the budgeted units sold ap equals the accurate actual average sales price here and bp equals the budgeted sales price here AVO, that would be the actual units of variable cost here, actual unit variable cost. Everything is on a unit basis here. 
Now the BVO here, that's the budgeted unit variable cost. AVC is the actual total unit variable cost here. That would be the, uh, okay, actual total unit variable cost. BVC here is the budgeted total unit variable cost. AFO is the actual fixed overhead, looking at the total amounts here. BFO would be the budgeted fixed overhead, again, the total amount here. ACM is the actual contribution margin on a per unit basis. BCM is the budgeted contribution margin on a, 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 on a per unit basis. The only thing that would be the total amounts here would be the actual fixed overhead and the budgeted fixed overhead. Everything else would be on that per unit basis. So this is the reference key and you can go back and go through the uh, video using these references here to determine what would be included in the formulas.